My hope for the future for bull trout in the, the Williston watershed is that they're thriving and here in perpetuity. And that's something that we just can't take for granted. The goal ultimately of this project is to maintain or improve the status or the population health of bull trout in the watershed. To do that, we need to identify the critical habitats that the species depends upon to thrive. Without that knowledge, we're, we're not able to uh, design or implement or prioritize habitat conservation actions that maintain or improve the, the productivity of those habitats. And the reason that's so important is that bull trout are extremely sensitive to habitat degradation or habitat changes. My name is John Hagen. I'm an independent fish biologist based out of Prince George, BC, and I'm working with Chucho Environmental on the Fish and Wildlife Compensation Programs, Bull Trout, Spawner Abundance, and Critical Habitats Project. For the aerial surveys, we do continuous flights from the mouth of each stream until we reach a migration barrier where the stream gets too small. We need to fly low, just above the treetops, in order to see the reds. We recognize the reds because of the distinctive shape and the contrast between the freshly disturbed gravel with the algae-covered substrate around it. We can survey around 100 kilometers per day, which is 20 times faster than is possible by foot. So far, we have surveyed around 2,500 kilometers of stream habitat using this method. As we fly, we record migration barriers and physical habitat characteristics that could affect spawning suitability and our ability to count the reds. I'm Erica Bondard and I'm a wildlife biologist with Chucho Environmental. Old trout are BC's most uniquely cold water adapted fish species. They're fish of the mountains and water temperature is a key determining variable of both habitat suitability and spawning timing. My name is Nathan French. I'm an environmental scientist with Chucho Environmental. We set up temperature logger stations at the top and bottom of each ground survey stream section to collect long-term data over time. The logging stations consist of an electronic temperature monitor within a waterproof casing, housed by a customized PVC casing. It has been a common problem for logger stations to get lost in the past. A unit wired to a root getting ripped off or a logger on rebar pounded into gravel being swept away. So we've come up with a system of attaching our loggers to the downstream side of a large boulder using underwater epoxy. We also mount a temperature logger to the side of the stream to measure air temperature. The monitor has an incredible battery life and can log temperatures every half an hour for up to three or four years. When crews return in the future, they can download the air and water temperatures through an app, allowing us to model trends to predict the future of temperatures in these critical sections of Boltro habitat. The foot surveys to count reds are conducted by a team of two observers wearing polarized sunglasses to cut the glare. 
We walk the stream scanning the stream bed for reds, which are gravel nests excavated by the female bull trout in which she deposits the eggs. We look for the distinctive crescent-shaped pit with a pile of clean gravel that has been swept in from the edges to cover the eggs. Typically a red has a bright overall appearance in comparison to the surrounding stream bed material. Ground surveys cover distances of about 5 kilometers, which is about what a team can cover in a day. We take notes of the number of reds, any fish that are still present at the site, and describe the stream bed whether it's gravel, cobble, boulders, and take water temperatures throughout the stream section. We also take note of overhanging vegetation, any cover in the form of logs or turbulence on the water surface, and also note any environmental site characteristics. Surveying for reds on the ground is more accurate than aerial surveys, and the stream descriptions help us determine how well the aerial and ground survey numbers will correlate. I'm Benita Cater. I've been doing red counts for many years now, and I love getting out on the rivers and being a part of the team and the project. In the Seike Dene territory, the bull trout is thriving. This is, this is a stronghold of bull trout abundance in their North American range. Bull trout are an extremely sensitive species. They're sensitive to the presence of, of other fish species that invade their territory, they're sensitive to increases in water temperature, and they're sensitive to land use. The, the technical term for the health of fish populations is their conservation status. So the status of bull trout in the Williston Reservoir watershed is it's a mix of two pitchers. You have populations in the southern part of the reservoir that seem to be declining. But populations in the northern, the Finley Reach watershed appear to be holding their own and doing pretty well. There's both more adult bull trout, as well as a stable or even a slightly positive trend. Whereas the trends for populations in the south of the reservoir are declining. So there's the, the stronghold of the species in this watershed is the Finley Reach watershed, including the Lower Finley watershed. The information we're collecting is some of the most important fish information that's being collected right now in the watershed. It's rapidly providing information about where bull trout are spawning, where critical habitats are, and, and how many that, of them there are in each of these watersheds. So that then forms the basis for planning for land use activities and for habitat conservation actions. This information that we're collecting is already being incorporated into habitat conservation initiatives. Some by the BC Ministry of Forest, Lands and Natural Resource Operations, but also by the Seke Dene Nation. Without that knowledge, we're, we're not able to design or implement or prioritize habitat conservation actions that maintain or improve the, the productivity of those habitats. And the reason that's so important is that bull trout are extremely sensitive to habitat degradation or habitat changes. So identifying those habitats, prioritizing amongst them allows us to get going with habitat conservation. Prior to the start of this study, Critical habitat locations were known for just four populations of bull trout where long-term monitoring had been initiated, but for the, the large majority of the watershed that we really didn't know where the critical spawning and, and rearing uh, habitats were. And that information is, is critical essentially for designing and enhancements. If they're not located in areas that are critical or limiting to the population, they're not likely to be effective by definition. 